I get a lot of different questions about MRI findings. And one of the most common questions that I get is, can you see a slip disc on an MRI? I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and in this video, I'm going to clarify some questions around slip discs on MRIs, what exactly they are, what they look like, what the symptoms are, and how serious they are. So first of all, what exactly is a slip disc? Well, a slip disc isn't really a medical word. It's more of a colloquial phrase that's used to describe a herniated disc. And actually, herniated discs have four different stages that they can go through. If you picture a normal disc like a jelly donut that has a hard outside and a softer inside, normally that jelly is fully contained inside that ring of the donut. Now, in the first stage of a slip disc or a bulging disc or a herniated disc, the disc is truly just bulged out. It starts to press out into the harder part, but it's not gone through that outer ring of the donut or the annulus fibrosis is the medical term for it. Now in the second stage, it starts to go almost all the way through the donut, so to where the jelly is almost on the outside of the donut, but it's still contained within that layer. It hasn't poked all the way through and extruded out of the uh, out of the donut yet or out of the annulus fibrosis. Now in the third phase, that's actually called an extrusion where the nucleus or the jelly goes outside of the bounds of the outer ring or the annulus fibrosis. And at that point, it can kind of start to push on some nerves and cause some symptoms that go down into your legs. And then the fourth phase is what's called set sequestration, where the herniation not only goes outside of the bounds of the disc, but actually breaks off and becomes a free floating body within the spine. And that's actually kind of a better situation than the third phase, because once it's broken off, that annulus can kind of heal back up. And it's a little bit easier to heal if there's not that disc material in the way. Now, the good news is that because discs don't slip in and out, your spine is very stable, very strong, and even if you do have a bulging disc or a herniated disc, it's very likely that you'll be able to heal without surgery. Now, what are the symptoms of a slipped disc? And I use the term slipped in this video because I want to use the terms that people use when they're searching for it, and by that way, you'll have a better chance of actually finding this video and getting the tips that you're going to hear in this video. But just know that that is not the proper term for it. So the symptoms of a slip disc or a bulging disc are, when it's just in the bulging phase, is generally just spine pain, usually central spine pain that doesn't radiate anywhere. Now, as you start getting out into that uh, extrusion phase of the herniated disc, then you might start to put pressure on the nerve roots, and it can cause symptoms that go down into your leg. That may be pain, that may be numbness, that may be tingling, it may be some weakness in your leg, and in very, very serious cases, it can be loss of bowel or bladder function where you either can't go or you can't hold it when you have to go. Now, in that last situation, if you're having bowel or bladder problems, that's more of a serious medical issue that you should get help for right away. In the case of weakness, if you notice that you're starting to get weaker over time, that maybe you didn't have any weakness and then it came on, or you had just a little bit of weakness and over time it's getting worse, that's also a little bit more serious of a problem. But if you just have back pain, then that's not quite as big of a problem. Now, there are lots of studies that show MRI findings in normal individuals, and I'll put a graphic from one study up on the screen of MRIs that were taken in people without any back pain. And as you can see, that findings that are abnormal on your MRI become more and more common as you age, even in people without any pain at all. And what that means is that if you have a bulging disc or a herniated disc on your MRI, you may not necessarily need surgery, and it might not even be the cause of your pain. That if you just happen to have that bulging disc or herniated disc on the MRI that was there before your pain started, and then you had pain and someone thought to take an MRI. Well, the pain that you're having, it may be caused by the disc problem, but it might be caused by something else. For example, 
joint problems or muscle problems. And so just because you see that problem on your MRI doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to need surgery. So a herniated disc may or may not be a serious problem. Again, the case where it could be serious is if you're having loss of bowel or bladder control or progressive muscle weakness, particularly in your legs and the lower back or if it's in your neck and your arms. So what are the proper treatments if you have a herniated disc in your back? Well, that really depends on the clinical presentation. Again, as a clinician, we don't treat the findings of the MRI, but we treat the patient that comes attached to that MRI. And it really depends on what type of trouble that you're having, whether your pain is when you're standing or when you're sitting or when you're laying down. That's going to be the appropriate treatment for your particular back pain. Now, I get the question a lot, can a chiropractor fit a slip disc. And chiropractic treatment or spinal manipulation is a really good treatment for some types of back pain. Uh, a lot of the research shows that spinal manipulation is very effective for certain types of people with back pain, particularly people with more recent onsets of back pain that don't have pain that goes down your leg. Now, if you do have pain that goes down your leg and past the knee, spinal manipulation may not necessarily be the best treatment for you. But as to whether a chiropractor can fix a slip disc per se. Again, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, your spine is very strong. Your discs don't tend to slip out of place and slip back into place. So manipulation can be very helpful, but just know that the cause of that manipulation being helpful has more to do with the nerves and the impulses that that manipulation delivers to your nerves that make your muscle spasm stop. It doesn't really have to do with putting a disc back into place, so to speak. Now, what other treatments are available for a herniated disc in your back? Well, only in very rare cases, about you know, 1 to 5% of the time do those problems need surgery. In the rest of the case, conservative treatment is very, very helpful. And that is something that we help people with here at More for Life. We help people to stay active, mobile, and healthy without relying on pain medications, injections, or surgeries. We do use spinal manipulation for certain people who are most likely to benefit from it. But in other cases, we just help you get back to doing the things that bother you most, whether that be getting a good night's sleep, whether it be in going out for a walk, getting back to some exercise, being able to spend time with your kids or grandkids and run around and play. Whatever it is that's important to you, those are the things that we want to try to get you back to doing. Now, as to exactly how we do that, that depends on your clinical presentation. And if you do need some help for a herniated disc and you happen to be in St. Louis, we'd be happy to help you out here at More for Life. And if you're watching this from somewhere else, but you found this information helpful, helped you to alleviate some of the fears of the findings of a herniated disc or a bulging disc on your MRI and help relieve the fear that you might need surgery, then give this video a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.